G'day everyone. Well, welcome to another Toolbox Tech Talk uh, with me, Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab. Uh, apologies for being a bit late today. It's uh, four o'clock Melbourne time. Normally we do these at two o'clock Melbourne time, but we've got a guest from, from Austria today and I didn't want him to have to get up too early. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll come to, to my guest in a minute. Um, my, my, my guest is um, kind of the old boy of Austrian PV scene, the Austrian PV scene. He spent half of his life bringing renewables to the front. Um, he's a civil engineer, an electronics engineer, has a doctor's degree in economic sciences. Um, he's just an overachiever, basically, uh, and also a passionate entrepreneur. So he's built up several businesses in this industry, uh, the industry of solar. It's my great pleasure to introduce introduce Gerhard Rimpler of MyPV. G'day, Gerhard. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Glenn, and hi, everybody who's watching and listening. <laughs> Great. Oops, we've got a little tech issue just happening then. Um, yeah, so uh, my next guest, and there's two of them, is... And I'll just bring me back. Here we go. Uh, my second guest today has run numerous commercial plumbing and, and maintenance businesses, has been the vice president of the Masters Plumbers Association of Australia for the past eight years and has been developing solar PV heating solutions through his business, Energy Smart Water. It's my pleasure to introduce Norm Anderson. G'day, Norm. G'day, Glenn. Thanks for having us today. Looking forward to the session. Great. What's that behind you? Are you standing on a roof or something? Uh, no, mate. <laughs> it does look like a roof, but uh, no, I'm inside inside the office, mate. <laughs> I must admit, it's sort of uh, been quite interesting to me that uh, the world of plumbing has started to move into the the electrical world to some extent with with solar PV and water heating. So we're going to talk a lot about that, aren't we? Most definitely. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to bring um, Gerhard back. So just Gerhard, how's it going there in Austria at the moment? Yeah, we're pretty fine. We're uh, <clears throat> autumn is uh, starting. What we are also somehow affected by the by the corona issue. Uh, the government just announced more strict laws to uh, overcome uh, increasing numbers of, of uh, positive tested people, and let's see how how we will uh, go through the winter. Uh, we are with our solar business we have to say that we are somehow even positively affected by the corona stuff the people had to stay at home the people had time to do something around their home they, they did some home improvement they invested in pools but i think they also invested in solar yeah it's been it's been quite a phenomena here in australia too as everyone's been uh, at home doing uh, handyman handy person stuff and uh, yeah thinking about ways to uh, spend their lockdown Fruitfully, so yeah, it has actually been a, a, a strange benefit in some ways. So, how about you, Norm? Um, you and I are both in Melbourne, in lockdown city. Uh, how are you going? Yeah, look, we're going okay, Glenn. We're probably a bit like uh, most of the industry in the commercial sector, being shut down with uh, seventy-five percent of our labour, but um, we're still busy in the hot water business and, and some of the maintenance business where there are especially around hot water um, in the buildings where there's nobody occupying. Obviously, there's no building maintenance, but um, we're still moving on and uh, and keep positive. Hopefully, we can get out of this thing in the next week and uh, start to make some changes. We've got a few jobs backlogged as uh, sites are closed, but mm. looking forward to uh, moving forward. Yeah, there's going to be a big rush of work, I can see, in a few weeks' time probably. So, yep. Um, so just coming back to Gerhardt now, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, water heating, uh, solar PV, uh, diverting energy from electrical to thermal systems. But more broadly, I'm interested, Gerhard, with your uh, interesting background in uh, civil and electrical and uh, also in um, uh, economics, how did you get interested in renewables? Yeah, that's... That's an interesting story. It's back in the in 1995 uh, when I uh, got the chance to to, to join Fronius at that time, <clears throat> and the idea was to build up a solar department there. there. And, and uh, to be honest, in, before I I didn't also have much clue about the renewables in detail. But but uh, getting this chance, uh, I made myself a more a little bit more uh, uh, informed about the whole story and I immediately got not just the 
track that I got convinced that this is something that we really need to do as mankind, because we need to change this the energy system from fossil to, to renewable. Right. Okay. And um, <clears throat> sorry, I just uh, switching my other camera on then. Uh, so what about Norm? How did you get into this renewable area? Well, I guess being uh, plumbing land and dealing in hot and having a hot water business as well and dealing with hot water for many, many years, um, we came up actually with a bit of a crazy, crazy idea one day with uh, Herman, who's uh, our guy, also located in Austria, that works for us in, in Austria, and um, said, why can't we make hot water from those PV panels? So we hooked up a couple of panels to an electric element in the hot water tank and it got hot and we went, oh, wow, okay, so... Sort of a bit of a like Gerhard, a bit of a pioneering sort of stage at the time, and from there we uh, played around. We're trying to build our own product, uh, which got a little bit difficult and and uh, a bit uh, bulky and cumbersome. With we're trying to control the DC, and um, then Herman found Gerhard, and uh, we've we've been in a relationship with my PV for probably about the last six years. It's been a tough one in, in Australia because uh, we brought a product that Gearhard's OEM'd for us uh, to do with our Rotex tank to make a thermal battery. And when we brought this DC element to uh, Australia, it would never been done before and there's still not too many of those type of things in the market, but we had to jump through a lot of hurdles at, at a lot of cost to get the product approved so we could actually go to the next step. And... Uh, and recently, we've had the same. The, the actor has been available in Europe now for well over 12 months, probably heading into two years. But we've only just got over those hurdles in Australia now to start developing uh, and introducing the product into the market. So, Norm, there's there's been a lot of over the you know past decade or more a lot of government incentives for renewables. Um, uh, how have they or not been? Have they or have they not benefited uh, your business? Yeah, unfortunately, Glenn, in the um, the way that the, those renewable sectors are set up, the the technology is fairly old. There's nothing being done roughly since about 2002. So we're looking at nearly 20 years, and you still have um, you know grants given out for solar hot water, but it's thermal based. And you know to spend ten thousand dollars on a thermal system to get a thousand dollars back, it's not really palatable to people. So. Uh, we're hoping we can change that in the near future. We've got some meetings set up with uh, with the government um, next week. So they are starting to look at new technologies, which is good to see. They've realised that now they're capitalised enough on solar and on wind to bring the new technologies to the forefront. So I think we're sitting in the sweet spot at the moment and uh, hopefully um, people can see the value that our products add um, and, and take them on board. Right. So just coming back to Gerhardt and um, your business, so your company's called MyPV, right? Yeah, that's right. And you make a, a range of products, which I've got a few of them here at the lab. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about them? So the idea started about in 2014 when uh, we brought the first product uh, creating uh, heat directly from solar panels. So it's, it's uh, like Norm told, uh, connecting solar panels to a resistive element in principle is not a problem at all. Uh, but I have, have to say a warning at this point, if you try it at home, uh, electrically, it's not a big problem. Uh, it, it would work somehow if, of course, would not do any MPP tracking so the, 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 the solar panel would run at whatever point the, the element brings at the situation, but there is one really uh, safety issue that I need to mention. Uh, the element itself doesn't care if you power it up with DC, but there is always a thermostat in between. And the thermostat is a mechanical, like a relay, just separating contact. And it, this doesn't work with DC. So don't try it at home. <laughs> it's, it's, it's somehow dangerous. At least you cannot interrupt the arc anymore and it would stay burning inside of the thermostat and at least destroying it and reconnecting. So that's the, at least that what, what could happen. That's a, a kind of a security a safety warning that, that I need to tell here. So what we brought in 2014 is a, is a, a heating element with a built-in uh, power electronics and basically an MPP track, tracker, a DC DC converter, which allows you to directly connect a, a, a PV array from four to eight panels in series. It's it's a string type of of, uh, of connection, and bring this power directly to the uh, to the heating element. Uh, 
this is in 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 fact a, a directly competing technology to that what solar thermal does because the PV is not connected to the to the grid somehow. It it just uses the full PV power that comes down from the sun for the hot water. Uh, the basic difference is that the 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 system design and the system uh, complexity is much. Uh, much less than compared to solar thermal, especially if you're talking about the typical uh, flat plate collectors on the roof and the tank in the basement or somewhere outside. We're not talking about these cheap uh, systems, with thermal siphon systems where the tubes are connected directly to the tank. These are also relatively simple to do, but they have some some real disadvantages. There's no pressure and so on. So that's uh, a kind of, of competing solution, and and on the long run, I think it's the it's the the winning solution because it's 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 so much more reliable and it's so much cheaper and it's it's uh, so much easier to do. So Gerhard, what I'm going to do actually is draw um, that system in a single line diagram uh, on my overhead camera. The audience will be able to see it, but you won't. So we'll just go through the the basic elements. So you've got a PV array, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what, what does the PV array directly connect to? So it's directly connected to a heating element, including this uh, DC-DC conversion power electronics. Right. So, so there, there is there is in fact just the second device in the in the basic circuit diagram. We are not talking about over voltage protection and these type of things. Interrupters, just the basic di diagram, I guess. Yeah. So. So what I'm drawing is uh, uh, an array of solar panels, an isolator is required by our standards, uh, and then we've yep. got a DC-DC converter, which uh, commonly called a maximum power point tracker, is that correct? It's a power point tracker, yeah. Yep. Uh, and the output of yep. that is connected directly to a resistive element inside your tank. That's correct. Okay. Yep. There's the resistive element. And this is a compact unit, so it's, it's, it's just one device. The element is not separated in this case. What size element would that be? Uh, the element is two kilowatts electrical. So how much PV would you put on it? Uh, you would normally put on something between four and eight panels. So we, if you take 300 watt panels, you're somewhere around 1.2 to 2.4 kilowatts. Right, okay. So it's not gonna completely fill up your roof. It's a, a modest sized system. Um, and so what I've drawn now is the tank uh, showing the elements inside it, uh, the MPPT. And the key point, I suppose, from all of this is that there is no grid in this picture. Uh, but there is an option, isn't there? Yeah, the unit, you can connect the unit to the grid, but that's a separate circuit in it. So the, the solar circuit does nothing have to do electrically with the, with the AC circuit. It's completely isolated. Uh, and this is just the boost heating option of the product. So if your sunlight is not sufficient to heat up the, the tank uh, sufficiently, uh, the unit automatically can be set up in a way that it, it provides the boost heating to get your hot water. Right, okay. Well, I think I've done a fairly good representation of that. I'm just uh, zooming my camera so people can see it more clearly. Right, mm -hmm. so there's two elements uh, in the case. I've got one of these systems here uh, at the lab. In fact, it's connected to my house and uh, it's been like that for some years now. It must be about three years or more, Norm. Um, and it does a, a wonderful job of uh, heating water with two kilowatts of PV connected to it. The boost element I've got on a timer because I've got predominantly, I'm a, on a microgrid here, so the boost element is only available uh, during the solar part of the day anyway. So in a way, it's all solar. <laughs> so some of it is dedicated um, and some of it is bonus, uh, depending on mm. the amount of solar available that's surplus on the microgrid. Yeah. Cool. So Glenn, that, that system that you have at your place is connected to our uh, Rotex tank as a as a thermal battery, but this is the OEM product made by MyPV for Australia, which is uh, called as sold as a system called an ROSC20. And we also have an option where we can switch out the uh, boost element to run a gas system to, to boost the tank or an alternative heat source. So we've actually tricked the, tricked the system up a little bit when we had to go back and rethink what um, the regulatory bodies wanted we had to make a couple of changes around earth fault alarms and the likes uh, halfway through the testing procedure. Um, the other key issue is that with the Rotex tank we're able to put multiple coils in the tank so we can do hydronic heating and hot water off the tank and we can also uh, 
and a 500 litre tank, uh, like you have, I think you have a 300 litre up there, 500 litre tank, we can store around about 50 kilowatts of energy, unpressurised water, so we can heat the tank to 85 degrees C. Uh, this is very, this is different to a normal hot water system because we can only get the tank up to around 70, 75 and wants to blow off. So storing at a higher temperature, having a larger yield of energy, we can actually provide a lot of energy to the home. We have a home in Sydney that's operated for the last 12 months, um, saved around about $600, and the electricity bill for the hot water was $50 for 12 months. Wow. So I've just drawn that with the uh, heat exchange coil showing a single coil, but as you point out, using the Rotex tanks, you can build them a custom tank to suit the mm. customer's heating requirements for multiple sources, domestic hot water, hydronic heating or others. Yeah. And we can also do full heating as well, Glenn. Wow. Off one tank. Yeah. yeah. Now, you just made me think of something here. Um, a question I sometimes get when we talk about heat pumps, and that's another whole story we'll get to later on, uh, is I hear people saying, can you use a heat pump for hydronics? Um, I believe there's some problems trying to do that. We can do it with the Rotex tank because it's a separate circuit, a closed loop circuit, and we do it already, uh, no problem at all with our system. Um, Gearhard may have some other systems they've worked on in, in Austria in different ways, I'm not too sure. No, I meant the using, rather than using um, the, the MyPV system, using, say, a, a compression system, uh, re reverse cycle refrigeration as a way of heating water. Um, you know, people sometimes think, oh, I just use the same hot water service uh, that heats my domestic hot water heat pump to heat my hydronics. But I believe that their duty cycle is a big issue for heat pumps to be able to run them continuously. I believe so, Glenn, yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, Gerhard? Yeah, I wanted to add something as far as heat pump is concerned. What we do in, in many systems is combining our technology with heat pumps. The, the, there is one certain reason. Heat pumps have usually a hard time to get up the water really hot. So they work very well if you want to do pool heating, for example, running at, at, at 20 or, or also floor heating. If they are running at 25, 35 degrees they're really excellent products but if you want to go higher the, the the heat pump really suffers from the temperature difference that's the point and especially in winter time when it's cold outside in austria of course even more than in in your place uh but it it, it really goes down with efficiency and as you probably know practically every hot water heat pump also contains a standard heating element just to create the, the missing power. So what we can do with our product is connecting this element to the actor, for example, which is a product a little bit different from that what you was, were drawing before. Uh, it's connected to the AC line, and it has a has a mode where it can control a heat pump, allowing the maximum efficiency from the heat pump, but in addition, uh, utilize all the variable power that you may use from your PE system, which is uncontrollable more or less because it's just related to the sunlight and the heat pump always especially the, the the normal hot water heat pumps they are they just on and off they are not not speed control they are not inverter control though they suck a certain amount of power once they are switched on that's one thing second thing they are not uh, they don't have unlimited switching switching cycles so you may not switch them on and off instantly if you once run it you have to run it for let's say 15 20 30 minutes uh, and if if you stop it you have to stop it for a certain time and all this intermediate stuff where the heat pump can't cope with we can do with the actor and control linearly and use all the pv power that is excessive now you mentioned the actor and i've got one right here next to me um, in the overhead camera i'm just going to bring it on so people can see what we what you're talking about here and maybe you um you could explain a little bit about it i'm just going to open the box so uh it's actually quite small as people can see there's my hand there um it's amazing this is the um Actor 9S, so it's actually capable of 9 kilowatts, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. And it's definitely a feature, it's extremely small, for the, so the power density of that product is incredibly high. So um, my, my partner, who's not really electrically minded, she said, how can that be 9 kilowatts? It's so small, my heater is 2.4 kilowatts, and it's way bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be an unboxing video, huh? <laughs> well, I'm unboxing it right now, actually. Um, yeah. Oh, there's a little, oh, look at that. I get a little hammer with it. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's the Tor hammer. <laughs> 
Now, you, as you, I'm holding it here under the camera so people can see it, um, at the base of the unit is the connection points. And uh, let's have a look here. We've got out one, two, and three. What, what's all that about? Yeah, in fact, the Acto 9S is a three-phase unit. Uh, so it is able to control three uh, multiplied by three uh, kilowatts in, in total nine kilowatts. It has a, a, a connector from the input side, needs five connectors. It's, it definitely needs a neutral connection, so it's, you cannot connect it um, with a triangle. You have to always connect it starwise. You have to provide the neutral. And it has three separate outputs for three elements or for a three-phase element with a, with a common neutral. Right. Now, you've also got um, a, a, a ground and B. Now, I presume that's comms? Uh, that's comms, exactly. That's RS485 comms. There is also e either net comms on it. Uh, there is a PWM input and PWM output, and there is connection option for up to four temperature sensors. Now, so why would you want to connect an Ethernet cable to this? Uh, most of the control or this, the, the standard application for this product is that it is controlled over Ethernet. So but, but the, the, the basic idea of power diversion is that you have some measuring point. Sorry, I just turned the wrong speaker on then if you heard, heard yourself. Um, yeah, I heard, I was, <laughs> sorry, I was confused. <laughs> so yeah, hang, the, the just, basic idea. Go ahead. Yeah, the basic idea of um, power diversion is that you have some measurement unit at your injection point, measuring the excessive power going back to the grid. And uh, th this meter information is sent usually over, over, uh, over Ethernet to the actor. The actor detects the amount of excessive power and regulates exactly uh, to take this amount of excessive power to the element. Right. And this can do it up to f from zero to nine kilowatts. So it's basically... If I would call it technically, it's like a, a variable transformer. It has AC on the input, it has AC on the output, but the output voltage is controllable, and therefore the output power that the element creates is, is controllable. So for your benefit, because you can't see me doing this, I'm opening the, the meter box, the MyPV um, power meter. Now, personally, I, I was rather excited when I discovered that you could connect the power meter over Ethernet because in my lab, um, there's like five buildings actually, and the hot water service is a long way from the main switchboard, but I've got a data network going to all the buildings. And it meant that I could put the MyPV at the sort of the microgrid um, grid forming system, uh, and it could measure surplus energy flow and communicate that with a remote building without having to run a whole lot of separate cables. Yeah. So the, the, the power meter also had an Ethernet plug, as you mentioned. So it is it is a, a somehow a smart meter. I wouldn't really call it relatively smart. It's just the, the comms that it has is smart. The metering is more or less standard. It's a bi-directional meter. Uh, but it has the, the comms provided uh, for the actor. You could either connect it directly to the actor, so no no network at all is required, or you could connect it uh, through just standard uh, network uh, setup in your in your household uh, with your router, router and, and and switches and so on. Great. Uh, I'd just like to uh, invite the audience. So we're actually streaming live to Facebook, uh, to YouTube, and to Twitter today, and uh, you can ask questions in the comments field. So if you want to type a question in, uh, and I'll just uh, repeat the question to our to our audience, to our guests, and uh, you can get a live answer. So just remember those comments field, that's where you can put your questions in. So um, we've got quite a few viewers, but uh, no comments so far. So feel free even just to say hello. Uh, we know if we've got one hello, we've got two hellos. G'day. So we've got um, Ketty Al says hello, and Michael Mayer says hello. Great. From Tasmania. <laughs> And it Michael sounds like has one of, he does. He yeah, says Michael I'm a, has, uh, he has one of our units installed down in Tasmania. That's right. Yeah, he's just saying I'm a, a, a an actor user um, off grid. So yeah, that's great, Michael. Um, yeah, so just coming back to the technology, we've got um, the MyPV uh, DC solution, which uh, in Australia, what was it called? The model number. So it's an R. ROSC20 because uh, it's actually sold as a system. Yep. Uh, um, 
So it, because most of our hot water plants are external, so it sits outside and has a weatherproof housing and quite a few other things. So it's a longer version element um, to suit the tank. And uh, yeah, product works really, really well. We also use the product in commercial applications where we've replaced uh, thermal solar by injecting kilowatts just into maybe three or four tanks in series, putting eight kilowatts into the system, reducing uh, running costs from ring main losses in buildings, you know, uh, by ten to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, depending on the size of the job. So, a question I get quite a bit is, why would I use PV to heat water when solar thermal is inherently so efficient at converting uh, sunlight into to thermal, you know, heating of water? Well, we've got a, a, a at our interact the solar thermal system set up, and we're actually a big solar thermal installer as well. It depends what our client wants. But it is dying fairly rapidly globally uh, because there's a lot of complications with it. You've got problems with uh, the weight of the, the panels generally on the roof, freezing in, in cold temperatures, over temperature, pipes, you know, thermal heat losses, all the things that, that create a problem. And the data we're getting off our system here, like about 10 kilowatts off a thermal system, the best we've had off an SC20 is around 16 kilowatts. If we take the thermal thermal system and we take the heat loss and the running of the pump coming on and off as well into, into uh, the situation, we're probably about double the performance of the, of the uh, thermal panel. The other interesting thing is thermal is normally reacting to a temperature change within the tank and the roof. So our thermal system may not come on until about 10 a.m., but this morning our PV system came on at 6.15. And it'll go off when the sun goes down. It's not actually waiting. It's not. It's more dependent on daylight, not so much the heat or the sunlight. So we can get a long run time, which we can't get out of thermal solar. Right, right. I just might add my perspective on this one too, which is um, having actually installed uh, a, a little bit of um, of solar PV uh, thermal systems uh, with a plumber, of course, uh, and knowing the cost of plumbing. Sorry. <laughs> Norm, but it is a it's quite an expensive trade, and <laughs> copper pipes are a lot more expensive than copper wires, and also the the, the runs of your pipes you lose a lot of energy uh, over distance with copper pipes, even if you lag them properly on an outside of domestic building. So you've got all these losses to factor in in the thermal system, uh, and your um, you know labour costs are often quite high, and it's. Uh, compared to sort of putting a PV system up with in Australia, the, the costs are so low now because we're very, very efficient at uh, putting PV panels on roofs. And uh, even though they might be um, area-wise less efficient at converting sunlight to, to electricity, um, from a, a total cost of ownership, I think they're definitely cheaper. So, you know, you've got low labour costs, uh, very low material costs, and uh, you've got all those added benefits of my solar panels never freeze and crack my PV panels <laughs> because it's a cold winter's morning. They just work mm. better. <laughs> they love the cold. Yep. So, you know, I don't have any of those um, those thermal issues. Also, they're going to last a lot, lot longer than a thermal system, I imagine. So, you know, mm. there's no moving parts. There's no pumps to replace etc. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of wins for me. Um, but it does take up more roof area. You got, I, you know, I like to point that out. You do need a bit more roof area. So if you're really constrained in roof area, that is a consideration, wouldn't you think? Uh, what you've got to consider, Glenn, is that with the MyPV technology, we, we, we're probably a little bit more than a hot water unit. We're actually, the PV is the main heat source for the unit. So sometimes I get a little bit lost whether we, we should be calling it a solar hot water because the, the P, it's, PV is actually the first generator. The AC is a boost. Now, in our, a lot of our systems, we don't actually kick the boost in. We've got homes running 12 months that haven't even used any boost. Depending on how you manage it and if you can store the energy at a high temperature, so we've got to be a little bit careful that we don't sort of get lost that we're not just, because solar was always talk about as a preheat we're not a preheat we're actually the source of heat mm -hmm. the, the general source so right gotcha I'm just having a little glance down. Michael Meyer is very uh, vociferous here. He's <laughs> saying he's very happy uh, with the, the forum. Thanks, Michael. And um, he does have some tech questions, so to do with temper adjustments, but would like to talk that through um, with others, actor users, um, maybe not here. So I guess uh, Michael's looking for a, maybe a little bit of an offline uh, conversation around some of those technical questions. But feel free, Michael, if you think uh, this is something that you've got 
got uh, the audience here. You've got um, the, the the inventor, uh, Gerhard, <laughs> and uh, the, tra- the local trainer, uh, Norm here, who's got a, a training facility uh, on how all these systems work. So it's a great chance to, to ask them some questions. Now, yeah, we're... Michael, we've um, sorry, Glenn. Michael, we've um, we've also got our own technical guy in Australia and also with backup support from MyPV in Austria at any time. We are looking at, I think we've been discussing with as well about setting up a, a MyPV forum where we can uh, throw those questions and get some answers around as well. So uh, look forward to talking to you again soon, mate. Great. Now, just coming back to Gerhard, uh, we're going to talk a bit more technical uh, for a little while, and it might be an opportunity for Norm. He's going to give us a virtual interactive training center tour. So Norm's going to duck away, and uh, and Gerhard's going to talk to us a bit more about the technical uh, side can of just, the products. But yes, Norm. Can I can I just throw one quick thing in? Um, the uptake probably where and Gerhard will. We can get up to 85% self-consumption with our batteries. Um, the uptake in Australia has been really, really low on, on um, self-consumption. We're looking at around about 20%. Even though we use, we are, you know, I think about third or fourth biggest, largest solar installer in the world, we're not using it to its full capacity. So I'm hoping today is a bit of an education process for, for the listeners and, and we're more than happy to get involved and work with them and explain um, you know, we have a webinar set up for a couple of weeks' time that you're also going to talk about a bit later, Glenn. But, you know, we just want to get people to understand there's more to PV than just put it into batteries or, or dump it in the grid. We're seeing um, West Australia now drop down to three cents um, for feeding tariffs and soon it'll be zero. There's talk about people, about the energy companies wanting to charge us to put our excess into the grid. So we need to be thinking more about these type of products that can actually assist the homeowner and then get the benefit out of, their, out of what their investment is with their, their solar on their roof. I'll go and get set up and I'll join you shortly. Okay, good one. So uh, just coming back to you, Gerhard, I actually got a prompt from Kelly. Thanks, Kelly, uh, who actually works for Norm and she's uh, taking her Sunday off and not taking it off and just watching this live. Um, she asks a bit about the different modes that the Actor can operate it on, including things like frequency shift. Did you want to talk a bit about that, Gerhard? Yeah, besides the size that, that we already have seen from the product and besides it's worth a versatility from the output point of view that's what we didn't talk about it is able to control all three outputs linearly which makes it really able to for example and that's one of the modes that we can talk about is to use a a hot water tank as a stratified thermal battery so it means that you can um, put three elements in 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 the tank on different levels of the water and you can heat them uh, not at the same time, but uh, one after the other. It means that you have, for example, let's take a 300 liter tank and you have three elements put in one third of height each. Uh, you would have 100 liters of heating capacity at, at the top, and that's what we would heat primarily. So you get relatively quickly 100 liter of hot water. And when it's hot, the the actor can switch to the next element and and run the next hundred liters and so on. So it really stratifies the tank with the benefit of having relatively uh, quickly a certain amount of hot water. Because you you you're not very happy if you if you have 300 liter at 43 degrees. Uh, it's much better having 100 liter at 55 or so. So that's that's one of the benefits of the of the product. Uh, I'm drawing uh, this while you speak. That's one by the of way. the modes, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm just drawing this while you speak. So I've drawn a tank, and I'm showing uh, stratified with the three elements. And uh, so L1 at the top being the first phase to be diverted, then L2 in the middle, and L3 at the bottom. And I like your point that you'd rather have 50 liters of water at uh, 55 degrees Celsius than 500 liters at 25 degrees Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really important. <laughs> 
So the, as I said, that's one mode of the product that can then uh, really stratify through the um, through the elements. Uh, Norm did a nice solution with the Rodex tank, uh, where the element is is vertical rather than horizontal, and he designed an element with three sections. So it's a single three-phase element with three different sections of, of uh, where it heats, uh, finally having the same result as your drawing just showed. Um, that's one thing. Another mode of the of the actor is, uh, and that's the point that Kelly uh, uh, mentioned, is the frequency uh, mode. You know that uh, in off-grid systems, some inverters are able to do so-called frequency shifting, um, means uh, telling inverters or other devices uh, by the means of changing the frequency if it's power required uh, or not. The basic idea was to control the, the PV inverter uh, getting uh, controlled or, or limiting their power as soon as the battery gets full. And what we can do is using exactly this information means the frequency to control our load. So the, the result is that the, the, the actor jumps in before the PV inverter decreases its power. This is, means definitely usage of, of otherwise totally wasted PV energy. Okay, so I'm drawing a graph here with frequency along the, the bottom and uh, power on the right left hand axis which is power of the pv system uh, and under a normal frequency shift off-grid system what would happen is as the batteries are approaching their target voltage we would see the frequency increase uh, and a frequency ramping of power downwards you know typically what around about one and a half hertz range something like that i think the defaults are around 50.2 to 51.7 and, and or triple seven. Uh, so those that frequency ramping is power reduction of the PV, but you're using it as an opportunity to consume energy. So you just basically have the inverse of that in terms of the way the actor um, consumes power based on frequency. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So because it, it, in this off-grid systems, you definitely cannot make use of the PV power once the battery is fully charged. You really need to waste it unless you can find any other way to, to use it. And that's what we exactly are doing, using this frequency change to modulate the power of the element and exactly use it before the PV inverter shuts down. Great. Okay, I think I did a reasonable job of drawing that while, you, while you're talking about it. Uh, so that's another mode of operation. That's the frequency shift mode. Um, and we've got our multiple element mode. Uh, any other modes? Yeah, modes to control the heat pump, as I mentioned already. Modes to, modes to control room heating. Uh, that's an option which is not so well known already because room heating is, is uh, if you do it electrically, is of course strongly related to heat pumps. Uh, the strategy that we follow, and that's maybe not that common yet in, in Australia, but what we see here in Austria, in, in, in Germany, in Switzerland, which are... Uh, important markets for us, of course, uh, that the houses, from the from the regulation point of view, they, they are so well insulated that their annual he heating energy consumption is so low that you hardly can justify a very expensive and, and hydronic heating system. So if you do it differently and say, okay, do the heating electrically, either by, by, by floor heating or ceiling heating or, or uh, infrared panels, and put your money not in the basement with an expensive heat pump, but put the money on the roof with PV panels, you get a nice system which has the same effect. You don't need more electric energy over the year from the grid. You have your additional PV system which powers up your TV set and all the all the other stuff. You can combine it, of course, with batteries to run your, your house overnight. So this really comes out with a new, let's say, system design of the of the heating of, of a house which is well insulated or if you are in areas where, where let's say your outside temperatures are not as low as here for example actually this might be an opportunity for me to give a plug for your webinars that's coming up you've got one on the first of october uh four to five p.m i presume that's eastern australian time 
That's yeah, correct. Yeah, Eastern and Eastern Linton. Yeah, yep, yep. cool. And uh, you'll be looking at residential uh, power to heat, uh, PV self-consumption improvements, uh, etc. So there'll be uh, um, probably a lot more tech than we're talking today uh, with slides and stuff that you've, you've, you've uh, already um, shown me, some, some of them. So for those who are interested in a lot more detail around uh, this product, this is the opportunity. Now, the link is actually in the comments area currently in YouTube um, to register for that. And uh, is it free? Yeah, of course it's free, yeah. Yeah, yeah even better. And I'll add it to the link, the comments in, um, uh, unless Kelly does, uh, <laughs> in the Facebook feed as well. So um, that's that that's really good point that uh, – when you don't need as much heat because your homes are so efficient now, you can think of uh, other ways of utilizing one source of energy in lots of different ways. And electricity really is the most versatile form of energy because it can be transformed into so many things, light, heat, power, yeah, et cetera. So yeah, why not start with uh, a flexible um, energy source and then choose where you want to use it uh, and when you want to use it. Um, exactly. Now we've got Norm standing by. He's um, down in the lab. Um, sorry, I called the lab. Sorry, it's training centre. Now, Norm, are you ready for a cross to you? Sure, mate. Okay. So, oops, got the wrong screen there. Let's bring Norm on. Where is he? Okay. Um, tell us a bit about your training centre, Norm. Okay, Glenn. This is uh, part of our uh, interactive training centre at Dramana in Victoria. Um, we have a lot of people come down and experience hands-on uh, feeling because I think the best way of marketing is for people to actually touch and feel, experience and understand the product. So uh, I'll just go quickly. I've got to get my son to, to follow me around. I'll just run through a couple of the products. Go for it. So obviously here we have the Rotex tank with uh, the MyPV built into this nice little cabinet, which is uh, the Actor 9S. The power meter is actually installed over in our switchboard over the other side. And this is talking to the power meter and actually exporting. Um, the, before we export to the grid, we're actually heating the tank. Um, the other new feature that's just come out from my PV is a, a cloud connect option uh, that people can, can dial into. So it, it's uh, also part of why we need the Ethernet connection. So you can now monitor your device, but also you can actually do some remote changes to the device um, with this Ethernet connection if you join up to the uh, My TV cloud. Uh, this is this tank's actually being used. It's being used to do hydronic heating for our staff from upstairs, providing the domestic hot water for the facility as well. And this is the triple three-stage element that we have in the tank, so each element's actually recording. It's a little bit hard to see the screen, but uh, we can go into more detail um, maybe in the webinar so you can understand what's going on. The next tank's actually our MyPV SC20, and this is the um, DC element, which has got the, the weatherproof housing on top. It'll be hard to see the screen on the right, but the other thing with this product is it's also data recordable, so we can get all the data. It's factual data. This is stuff that we can't get from PV thermal um, unless we try and break it down in some magical way, but everything's actually recordable here. So if we we look at it today, our tank's maxed out at temperature 85 degrees. We've had a 10 degree uh, rising temperature. We've only put uh, six and a half kilowatts of energy into the tank today, but it's very important, like I said before, the tank came on at 6.15 this morning. So again, another tank, the tank's cold, this is about two degrees of temperature over a 24 hour period. And the inside of this tank is currently 85 degrees and the outside of the tank would be lucky if it's uh, 20 degrees. Norm, Norm can I on just to... interrupt you for a minute? Sure, um, because you've got a Bluetooth headset in, don't get too far away from the computer because um, you okay. might, you might lose it. Well, you could bring the computer in. Um, you can even get a bit yeah. closer because we, we've got a good wide shot there. Um, you might want to okay. come come in a little bit closer if that's possible. Is that not, better? Not so much you, but the product. So we can see them a bit better. Oh, the product. Yeah, but you're full screen, okay. by the way. So just, you're not on the right-hand side. You're full screen. you a bit closer. Here's okay. a sec. Great. Right. <laughs> you bring the bottom across <laughs> Technical stuff. Oh, you got a table, have you? <laughs> We've actually got a um, stool with a, a rotating stool because it acts quite good to move the camera around. So um, that's much better. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the product a bit better there, but yeah, we can um, with an RS four eight five. We can take the information off the um, SROSC twenty system. We have a five hundred liter here. We also have a three hundred liter version as well. Um, 
And then we've got a couple other products as well. We move across to thermal solar. Our thermal solar is only showing 60 degrees for a flat plate collector and um, also 59 degrees for our actual uh, um, tubes uh, collector on the roof. So you can see that we're actually sitting at 85 degrees storage, but we're only getting 60 out of this. And, and these aren't running at the moment. They're only coming on and off. It's a drain back system. But the, the um, my PV products, we can maximise the temperature in the tank. The design around our initial concept is to make sure that you have a full battery full of hot water when you get home. And then you might use some through the night, use some in the morning, and then the sun comes up in the morning and away we heat the tank back up again and maintain that temperature. Just uh, briefly, Glenn, a bit about our, our factory. So we build a lot of commercial hot water plants for all over Australia. We're our Energy Smart Water is also an international company, so we uh, we have distributors globally. Um, the, the products that we've developed over the last 25 years in Australia are now sold across the world in USA, Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia. Of course, our friends in New Zealand, very close, and, and a few other, South Africa and a few other countries as well. Over to my other side here, we've got obviously battery storage. We've got a Selectronic unit, SMA units. We've got a Fronius unit up the front, another SMA. So we do a lot of factual uh, working here. We've got 30 kilowatts of solar on the roof. We've got two car charging stations out the front. So anyone that's got a, a, a battery powered car is welcome to come and visit. Anyone's welcome to come and visit us any time. Um, and uh, we're happy to take you through and show you what we do. We've got another little actor here just to show. So this is the single play series, and Actor comes with a stylus pen as well. So <laughs> it's very easy to, to use it on the touch screen to, to go through all the program. But you can see simply here we've hooked this up to a 25 litre hot water unit, and we're actually heating this off excess power that's before it goes to the grid. So it's very very simple because we can hook up to resistive elements. We can connect even up to a pool element, or a spar element, or even a sauna element, and and like. There's other things out there that we, we know we can also do. We have a couple other little training mod modules here around gas, fired stuff. This one's got an SC20 in it as well. We, ta we train the industry in our facility. So it's around. We've got heat pumps outside, big commercial heat pumps. We do a lot of commercial gas. Um, and it's about making sure people can touch and feel and, and experience the products before they buy them. The last one's probably the one down the front, which we still haven't got... Um, to the certification uh, table yet, but uh, that's an SC20 in any hot water tank, and that's actually working at the moment, and it's not plugged into the power, but we're sitting at around about 75 degrees C. Um, regulators and certification labs, so we must get this system tested with every tank, which is a bit ridiculous, so we're, we're trying to work through that at the moment. Um, that's probably uh, a quick snapshot of what we do here, Glenn. And um, as I said, anyone that's uh, interested in coming to visit us and uh, having a meeting and, and or looking at the products are more than welcome any time. Great. Th thanks, Norm. That was a really uh, interesting tour. And I just want to do a little follow-up on your point about um, measuring energy from a uh, PV system compared to trying to measure it from a thermal system. I've got uh, switched in monitoring my system here, and I'll just bring that slide up so people can see what it looks like. And I love the fact that I can compare um, the amount of DC uh, free solar heating compared to the amount of AC boosting. Now, we're just coming out of uh, winter here and being on top of Mount Tulibuong, it's kind of winter for longer. Uh, so it's pretty cold up here still, so we're still doing a bit of boosting. Um, so what uh, what we can see here is uh, that the PV system has generated about three and a half kilowatt hours of heat um, when the booster came on at four o'clock in the afternoon just to top it up. And then someone must have used a whole lot of hot water and the booster came on again. So um, I can actually see where the energy is coming from uh, with this monitoring. Now, with thermal systems, you just go, well, it's hot. I think it's working. I hope it is. I don't even know where the energy is coming from. Was it from the electric booster or was it from the, the thermal system? So, yeah, I, I really like the fact that you get um, all that extra monitoring capability um, with with a, a PV-controlled um, uh, water heating system. So um, thank, yeah. thanks for that yeah. factory tour. May I add something, Glenn? Yep. Back to you. Yeah. 
Uh, what we figured out in many systems, when we added this PV uh, hot water stuff, uh, the, we, we got complaints that the system doesn't work correctly because the, the, the water doesn't get hot. <laughs> and the real reason was they had so much problems with the hydronic system, either with circulating uh, the heat out uh, or with other problems. And in the past, they had gas heating or whatever, which just covered this this problem so they didn't figure out that they have one they just re recognized it when our system was uh, was added and they were able to see the figures and and ask the question where the hell does the energy go so this is really a benefit uh, often in in hydronic systems that that they are not not well adjusted or the pumps are not well regulated and so on there it, it's it's somehow uh, really a point where you can improve your system, not just from the solar point of view, but from the system design point of view. Good point. Now, yeah, another um, one to add to Glenn. If yep, I go forward. for it. Um, what we did in New Zealand probably about three and a half years ago, we actually had a, a field day, uh, for a solar field day out in the middle of a paddock, and we hooked up the SC20 and a Rotex tank to four panels, so one kilowatt of, of um, heat. Of, of electricity, and we made hot water in the middle of the paddock. And people were, were, were dumbfounded that we could actually make hot water. So the other beauty of the product is that because it's off-grid, if you lose power, we've still got hot water because we can mm -hmm. keep – the tank is actually an off-grid situation. So we can make hot water anywhere. Right. Very, very simply. Yeah, so more resilience, not one energy source for all services. Exactly. Now, we've got some questions coming in. Um, so let's see. The first one is from Arthur. Um, he asks, can, these sy can systems like the Victron GX control uh, the Actor over the network? Yeah, there is compatibility between uh, Victron and, um, and our product. Uh, there are two ways that it, as it works. It can either take the communication from this uh, from this display unit from uh, from Victron, or we can do this frequency sh shifting stuff. Right. So if you're talking to a Victron GX uh, via comms, are you doing it via the Ethernet? Is it TCP Modbus over TCP IP? Yeah. Right. That's correct. Um, the Kelly also says. Um, she asks about compatibility in terms of the frequency shift function. Uh, what inverters can uh, can in off grid do frequency shift, and the actor work with them? So it's it's tested at the moment with electronic, with SMA, with Victron, with Studer, with uh, yeah. I think that's the main players at the moment. Yeah, so pretty much the the main players and in Australia. Teams. Fronius doesn't do any off-grid inverters, oh, off so they're Sorry. they're not frequency shifting. Right. Okay. Great. Um, we've got a question from um, Trady Trev. G'day, Trady Trev. Uh, he's a couple of questions here. He says, um, "What can't we do over RS four eight five? I bet you could link a bunch of them together." I suspect he means a bunch of actors together. Yeah, uh, there are two options to connect a bunch of actors together. One is the master-slave feature of the of the product it means from external you control one unit and the and the units uh, in their own communication share power, which can uh, can be done either synchronously means all the products share the same power or they can be run in a stratification mode it means depending on the temperature of the of each temperature sensor uh, the units uh, jump in uh, heating one section primarily and then the next one as we had with this three element stuff with the Acto 9 ls is or of course you can control if you have a management system which can talk to each actor individually of course you can do that uh, also Okay, we've got a follow-up question from uh, Trady Trev, which actually is a good segue to uh, your oscilloscope that you've got. <laughs> I know Nick's sitting next to you. <laughs> he he asks, um, this product looks similar to Catch Power, which is a, a, one of the many power diverters available in Australia. Um, do you want to talk a bit about how power diverters work and the different ways that uh, you know they manage that power diversion? Yeah, uh, I want to really start with this oscilloscope scope here uh, because the, the background here is let's hold on a second hope you 
see it properly. Yes, that's good. Yeah, should. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Uh, what you see here is just an, an oscilloscope, a real-time oscilloscope uh, picture of the, the, the grid line from if you just look roughly at it, it, it looks like a sine wave. But if you look at it more in detail, you see that it's more or less uh, flattened the curve, <laughs> what it's called in these days. So on the top of, of, of the sine wave, it's more or less flattened. Uh, this means uh, a lot of uh, power supplies suck their power, their current, mainly at the peak, uh, either top or bottom of, of the sine wave. And that's something that the, the grid operators, of course, don't really like because they disturb their, uh, their, their pure sine wave that they should supply on the grid. It creates distortions. It creates, uh, 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 in this case, also, let's say, inefficiency of the grid because you draw the current more or less just at one time and not over the, over the entire time. And that's one of the reasons why uh, the grid operators also take care of how you do your power management. There are regulations where you are not allowed to do it in any way. Technically speak, uh, spoken, the easiest way to control a resistive element, like for, for example, a lamp, and that's where it comes from basically, is a thyristor or a triac. It's a device, an electronic device that is able to being switched on and stops uh, conducting current as soon as the, the zero cross is going on. If, if we go back to the oscilloscope, so we, the, the waveform would look like that the current starts flowing somewhere, it's phase angle controlled, runs all the way down to the zero crossing and then stops again. And that's a way that you can easily uh, modulate the the output power with the cost of that it really causes the, the disturbances on the grid. Uh, what we are doing is completely different. We really take sine wave current from the grid. We modulate it by high frequency switching as PV inverters would do or as electronic inverter, for, for example, would do. Modulate the, the power with high frequency switching and therefore creating sinusoidal current consumption from the grid on the one end and having sinusoidal output vo voltage on the element side. And that's the, on, on our point, the only way in the long run that you can really do power diversion. Um, this flattened the curve stuff that we just have seen is just the result of having millions and billions of, of, of uh, power supplies on the grid that do all the same. So the problem doesn't come up when the first unit in, is installed. The problem comes up when many units are installed. Just for your benefit, I've been, while you were explaining those, I was drawing them. Uh, so we've got uh, the three different ways of diverting power using burst fire, phase angle, and pulse width modulation. And identified, I've identified that the Actor uses pulse width modulation to simulate a, a sinusoidal curve as opposed to just throwing energy here and there. That's correct. Well, that, that was a good question, Trady Trev, um, because we did want to talk about that, and <laughs> the oscilloscope did come on screen. So, there, thank you, Gerhard. Yeah, that was uh, that was really good. Now, I'm just checking to see uh, who else has got some questions here. Um, so, uh, Kelly also says, "Great for larger projects where multiple units can be installed in parallel." For example, I, I think that was a follow up to the one about can you have more than one and control them. Um, so, yes, is the answer to that. Great. Um, anyone, anyone else? We've got a few comments saying they prefer my PV. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> Michael really loves you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And, and Michael says he gets 90% uh, of his hot water from his act door um, off grid. Uh, and he has a SMA Sunny Island system, so that uses frequency shift. Um, I, I believe from our chat when you were at my lab some years ago that um, it was a trip to when you were hiking in in Austria, I believe, to a to a lodge that you came across a sunny island that wasn't utilizing its energy well, and that's where you started thinking about these solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was in fact developed together with SMA with their uh, Sunny Island product and the first unit it was not the actor at the time it was a, a special version of the AC Elba which is also another product of fuzz uh, capable of, of changing again the power according to the to the frequency and it it runs on the mountain hut in in lower austria it still runs it's now in operating for i think four years or so uh, the uh, lady running the hut is, is is still very happy having hot water there is it's a funny story about how the, how she can manage having, I think, 35 beds or so for sleep 
sleeping with a 300-liter tank and I asked her, how, how the hell can they be happy with 300 liters? if 35 people go for a shower in the morning and she said that's pretty easy I just run ramp down the temperature of the tap to 7 to 27 and they don't use much much water <laughs> <laughs> it's self-limiting the showers is as long as you can it's sustain it yeah. exactly <laughs> Oh, that's a great story. Well, look, we're coming to the, uh, the the end of the show today. It's nearly the top of the hour, and I'd just like to cut back to Norm to thank him for the, the factory tour. Thank you, Norm. Hey, you're welcome, Glenn. Could I just throw one more in, mate? We've, um, we've got a large commercial hospital that we've actually uh, designed the Actor 9S into it, and we've taken out the ring main out of the building, and we've put a series of tanks on each level with the... Um, Actor and the central hot water plant for this hospital, which has got the green light to go ahead. Um, COVID has actually forced it to be put on hold at the moment, but uh, we're still going ahead. The hospital's actually um, got 100 kilowatts of solar on the roof, which is the central hot water plant for for the whole system. Um, in our da um, numbers we run, with traditional system would be about $70, $75 per person per bed to make hot water and we're down around the four to five dollar mark so by being smart and, and and changing the way we do things um you know looking after our planet and, and thinking about the future there's a lot of ways that we can do things um same with our tanks you know embodied energy it's a plastic tank inside and out it's got a hundred mil thick foam wall as i said before it's very very um durable we've been exporting the importing these tanks into Australia for the last 26 years. Um, Rotex is a company that's 40 years old, so our relationship has been very strong since they pretty much started. And uh, as I said before, we look forward to anyone that wants to come down and see us at any time. Uh, feel free to give us a call. Great. Thanks Thanks very much for that, Norm. And uh, thanks for showing us around your, your uh, interactive training centre. It looks very impressive from here. And uh, thanks once again to Gerhard for getting up so early and uh, coming to talk to us all. Thanks, Gerhard. You're welcome, of course. Thank you very much. <laughs> So that's it for, for today, but I'd like to just uh, give one more plug to the webinar. It's on October the 1st, 4 o'clock till 5 o'clock um, East Australian time, uh, which will be run by MyPV and Energy Smart Water. So the link to that is now in both. Thank you, Kelly, in the Facebook feed as well as the uh, YouTube comments. So you can just click on that. It's free to register. So um, if you like this show, um, just you know, click the like button. Uh, if you're on YouTube land, you might want to subscribe to, um, to my channel and we'll be back the same time, but oh, actually at two o'clock next week. So two o'clock's our regular spot on a Sunday for Toolbox Tech Talk. So thanks very much, everyone, and we're out. Thanks.